counterintuitive and it kind of works like a seesaw. I mean, there's arousal, then there's relaxation, then there's arousal. I personally think that in the availability of is, is a real is a real detriment to the developing brain, especially to the developing brain. Enter a realm of self-discovery and empowerment as Huberman's insightful strategies unravel the complex psychology behind FAP addiction, unveiling the key to breaking free from its addictive grip and forging a new path toward a life of fulfillment and vitality. We have to take a step back and now knowing what we know about testosterone and dopamine and all these things and, and ask, you know, what it, what is doing to the brain? Well, first of all, it's triggering the release of dopamine and in the short term, testosterone by the observation of it's not actually engaging in human contact. Brace yourself for a profound exploration of the human psyche as Huberman's teachings delve into the depths of FAP addiction, unraveling its hidden triggers and providing you with the knowledge to dismantle its power over your life. So just as a quick mention of something, uh, a lot of people take SSRIs or antidepressants that can disrupt function. There are a few compounds like maca root and tonga ali and things like that, that at least in a few studies in humans have been shown to offset some of the, the side effects. Witness the rebirth of your inner strength as Huberman's transformative methods embolden you to confront the uncomfortable truths of FAP addiction, enabling you to rewrite your story and reclaim your true essence from the clutches of this destructive habit. And you think about what Vernon and these things are, really are. I'm not calling them sinful. What I'm saying is they are potentially addictive, especially with the availability. Of so, um, you know, beware, you know, just everyone's different and, and people have to have to be careful about these circuitries. You really need to protect them. They are they are super valuable. Prepare for a monumental shift in your consciousness as Huberman's groundbreaking insights challenge societal norms and liberate you from the shackles of FAP addiction paving the way for a life of genuine connection, self-fulfillment, and profound personal growth. There's an additional issue with pornography, which is not often discussed, which is that, remember, guys in particular, the brain is a learning prediction machine. And if, I'm not trying to say that all is bad, but there are good data to support the idea that if your brain learns to be aroused by watching other people have it is not necessarily gonna carry over to the ability to get aroused when you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody else. Enter a realm of redemption and self-renewal as Huberman's resolute guidance leads you on a path of healing, empowering you to defeat the alluring temptations of FAP addiction and embark on a transformative journey toward a life of purpose, vitality, and authentic self-expression. Um, understanding arousal, understanding, for instance, a lot of people don't realize this, but that um, is actually the consequence of activity in the sympathetic, meaning the stress arm of the autonomic nervous system. Whereas arousal is the consequence of the activity of the parasympathetic, the calming aspect of the of of the it's autonomic. That's counterintuitive, right? It's counterintuitive, and it kind of works like a seesaw. I mean, there's arousal, then there's relaxation, then there's arousal, but the the um, and then immediately after, and in males. And what ends up happening is there's a rebounding of the parasympathetic nervous system, which it leads to oftentimes people feeling very relaxed or, or falling asleep. So uh, I'm going to do a, ser a short series on health that will be that will include stuff about performance, but also um, some uh, I, I'm working on getting a, an expert guest who can talk about some of the neurologic changes that happen um, as a consequence of activity. And we did an episode with uh, a guy from UT Austin here, David Buss, who's an evolutionary psychologist, talking about, um, we went pretty deep into some of the uh, typical and unusual dynamics of, of mating relation, mm -hmm. um, whether or not people have kids or not, and what impacts that. But we're going to do an episode on menopause, andropause. What's very surprising is I get a lot of questions about health from the young male audience, mm. um, which tells me that, well, here's what I think it reflects. I think that women, because of their menstrual cycles early on start to talk to one another about changes in physiology and psychology as a function of this 28 day cycle that they all experience sooner or later. I personally think that in the availability is, is a real, is a real detriment to the developing brain, especially to the developing brain. Yeah. Now it sounds like you rescued the behavior. Um, yeah. 
and it takes some discipline, right? I imagine. And it, it's one of those things that, um, it's also anxiety less compared to dating and relationships where people are vulnerable on both sides and have to negotiate things like, you know, consent and timing and, you know, and communication and all the things that are really hard to do, but are essential to do. That's, that's key. So I think, uh, is a serious issue. And because of the way that it taps into these very primitive systems, it's as serious in, in my mind as some of the other types of abuse, like the, the opioid crisis. And we talked about cell phones. You ever notice that when you get on a phone and you're scrolling Instagram, it's like a lot of fun. Like this stuff is cool. You're seeing people. And then sometimes you're on there and like, this doesn't feel good, but I'm doing it anyway. Yeah, I'm just doing it. That's exactly how people talk about their drug use. That's exactly how people talk about alcohol use. That's exactly how people talk about gambling. You imagine this high, but the high doesn't show up and that's, you, you're dopamine depleted. You need to take some time away from it and then come back and then you can enjoy it again. Now, with it's a slippery slope. Well, here's the uncomfortable reality. Freud was at least right about one thing, which is that the brain circuitry that you used to develop attachments to your caregivers, mother and father or other caregivers, do not disappear when you hit puberty. They are repurposed for romantic relations. And so this is why the whole notion of anxious attached and secure attached, you know, stems from childhood attachment patterns, but it carries over to romantic relationships. Well, and there's a dark side to this too. And it's something that I think especially guys young guys have to be careful of, which is nowadays the availability of porn is nothing like it used to be, right? Yeah. Someone used to have a magazine or a video. Now there's access to is just, you know, a couple, you know, thumb taps to, to a couple people uh, uh, and people uh, yeah. can get very, you know, young people can develop a lot of their arousal template yeah. to very extreme experiences, right? Because of the availability of extreme porn to, and never actually have any real world experience. Yes. So if you think about it, their brains are becoming wired up to become aroused watching other people have sex. Instead of having sex themselves. Exactly. So they, they, no, they're, they're, I've heard people like, oh, they need to watch porn in order. They, so they're having sex even to get watching porn. Even to get aroused. And, yeah. and I, and here, clinical fetish. I have to say, you know, that I get hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of questions, different health topics yeah. and science topics. One of the most common questions I get is how to quit porn addiction. And I would say about 25% of the people that I am aware of based on those questions and a few people that I happen to know um, who are porn addicted are women. Yeah. And so, and it becomes an issue where, so there can be, so do you ask, can there become a like self-conditioned Pavlovian response? Yeah. And it's like, absolutely. Think about the young brain being significantly more plastic and willing to rewire than the adult brain. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, there's no question about it. It's hyperplastic. Yeah. And of course it can wire, rewire again, but you think about somebody who engages in a lot of um, watching, right? Watching porn. And that person is getting dopamine and testosterone increases by observing and not actually by engaging in human contact, okay? So that's concerning, right? And there, and obviously that um, people vary, but it should come as no surprise that a lot of these people have trouble with um, romantic interactions when they do happen, right? Because they their brain isn't conditioned to respond to those, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And there's variation there, I'm sure. And, and these are private matters, so there aren't good data because there aren't laboratory experiments that you could do on this sort of thing that uh, someone will probably <laughs> do those experiments eventually. but. But also dopamine seeking is what triggers the increase in testosterone. But as we just talked about it with repeated dopamine seeking or triggering of dopamine release, it starts getting diminished, diminished, diminished. So pretty yeah. soon that behavior is not causing the release of testosterone. Now people are just doing it compulsively to try and get some little droplet of dopamine out of their, out of their brain.